Ladies and gentlemen, Chris of the Polish Geek and welcome to another video in the You Should Be Watching series and this is another anime, although it's this time not an anime series, it's actually an anime movie like one of my favorite anime movies of all time, possibly actually my very favorite anime movie of all time and that's Sword of the Stranger, like this movie is wonderful. I love period pieces, I love samurai and I love anime and great animation and this movie basically combines all of it because it's a ba it's an ultimate anime samurai movie and it's so wonderful like the animation is spectacular and gorgeous and all I was actually recommended this movie by a friend of mine when we both talked about some awesome anime movies and shows and I said how much I love Ninja Scroll and he actually recommended Sword of the Stranger telling me if I love Ninja Scroll and good stories then I should watch Sword of the Stranger so I did watch it it was actually a couple years ago actually and I loved it so much and I've been watching it more and more and with each rewatch I actually love the movie even more and as I said this likely is my favorite anime movie of all time now. So, let's talk Sword of the Stranger, another entry in the You Should Be Watching series. For starters, you probably already know how much I love period pieces and historical epics. And I always wanted a period piece in feudal Japan with samurais, and Sword of the Stranger was my dream come true, made all the better that it was told in anime form. Animation is spectacular, but we'll get to it soon. When it comes to historical epics about samurai, people will either recommend Ran, or The Seven Samurai, or Throne of Blood. While those are all pretty great classics, for some reason, none of them ever spoke to me as much as Sword of the Stranger did. Don't know if it's the spectacular animation, or the incredible characters, or maybe something else, but as much as I love Kingdom of Heaven or Knights of the Cross for Ultimate Medieval Movie, and Gladiator for Ultimate Ancient Row Movie, or Schindler's List for Ultimate World War II Movie, but for Ultimate Samurai Movie, my pick is decidedly Sword of the Stranger. The animation in this movie is beautiful and gorgeous and spectacular, it's mostly hand drawn but there is a little bit of CGI where there needs to be but it's so well done that you can't even tell. Artwork and animation remain consistently excellent throughout the whole movie and backgrounds and landscapes look so amazing and beautiful and they either look like a painting or like an old picture and this is just all looks so amazing. Just looking at the background feels like looking at a true work of art and the animation truly captures the look and the authenticity of feudal Japan. The music is phenomenal and one of the best anime soundtracks ever in my opinion. And the story of Sword of the Stranger is very simple, a typical story you might expect in a cowboy western or a samurai story, but that said, sometimes a simple story is all you really need and if you actually start experimenting with a story, sometimes it works very much in its favor, but sometimes it risks actually making it far less interesting and compelling, because simple story of Sword of the Stranger is more than made up by its cast of fantastic and compelling characters. Main characters of the story are the boy Kotaro and Nanashi, who you also known as a man with no name. And of course, there is one of my favorite dogs in all of fiction, Tobimaru. I'm by, the, I'm by the way a very huge dog person, I really love dogs and Tobimaru is so loyal and he's such a great dog. The relationship between Kotaro and man with no name is so wonderful and so wonderfully done and every part of their relationship feels natural and well developed and not a single thing feels forced or unearned. At first, Kotaro isn't very nice to man with no name and you feel anger towards him, but as the story goes forward, 
you realize that it is actually very hard to blame Kotaro for this. And it's no wonder that Kotaro has this trust no one attitude considering the terrible jeopardy he's in. Therefore, he certainly comes across as a jerk in the way he treats the man with no name or Nanashi, whatever you want to call him. But considering the dangerous situations he's in, it's actually perfectly understandable. And also, that makes their bond that they develop and friendship so far more meaningful and emotional. And their friendship is really the true heart of the story. And there are also the villains in the story, which are the samurai who want to kidnap Jotaro for ransom. But the bigger threat to him are actually the Chinese, who want to kidnap Jotaro to the Chinese emperor. And their goal is actually very sinister. They believe blood of the child will help them make an elixir of immortality, which the Chinese emperor seeks. And the Chinese are very loyal to their emperor. And... Not very familiar with Chinese history, but I did hear that there is apparently actually some historical accuracy here, because apparently the Ming, Chinese emperors, apparently they did actually seek immortality and, this, and they sent their servants after it. So, because both the Japanese samurai and Chinese soldiers want to kidnap Kotaro for their sinister plans, there is also some politics between feudal Japan and China that is explored here. And... Can't say I know much of that conflict in real life, but there is no doubt that that's kind how it actually was in real life back then. The Japanese samurai very much despise the Chinese soldiers who are in their country and they see them as foreigners who shouldn't be there. And with the Chinese, there is actually a European mercenary guy who is called Luo Lang, and while that certainly doesn't sound like a European name, maybe he calls himself that in Asia? Who knows? But anyway, he's by far the best villain in the whole story, and his actual goal is to find a worthy opponent who will match him in combat. He doesn't actually believe in the elixir of immortality, and he doesn't believe it's actually possible to make it. And he also doesn't care about foreign politics between China and Japan. His goal of being in Japan is to purely find an enemy who will match him in sword combat. And as I said, he's certainly the best villain in the whole movie, and actually probably one of my favorite anime villains. The action and fight scenes in Sword of the Stranger are wonderful and spectacular. They're bloody, gory, fast, include so many awesome moves, they're so greatly choreographed, and they are all around amazing. For some people, the ultra blood violence would be too over the top, but personally, I really love it, and... It strongly reminds me of Ninja Scroll anime, which Sword of the Stranger is in general kind of very similar to, just without the supernatural elements of Ninja Scroll, but still. And speaking of Ninja Scroll, this anime totally deserves a you-should-be-watching treatment of its own at some point. <laughs> the final duel between Nanashi and Luolang is so spectacular and it's very likely my favorite sword duel in any movie, or it's certainly in the top 5. If I ever did my top 10 favorite sword duels, this would likely either be number 1, or at the very least, in the top 3. And in addition to being so well choreographed and so well drawn, and the clash of steel, there's also so much emotion here, because Nanashi wants to protect Kotaro, with whom he developed a close bond and friendship, while Luo Lang is finally happy that he finally found a worthy opponent who could match him in combat. And at this point, both duelists very much respect each other. And the music during this final sword duel is splendid on its own right. It's so wonderful. Sword of the Stranger is probably my favorite anime movie of all time and also probably, very likely, my favorite samurai movie of all time. 
Yes, it will be very much heresy to people, but I actually think I like Sword of the Stranger more than I like any Miyazaki movie. What? What? Oh my god! Oh no! Like, Sword of the Stranger is simply wonderful, spectacular, and this is also very much type of the movie that whenever I watch it, I always remind myself, this is why I love anime so much. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, this is another You Should Be Watching video, and thank you for checking this video out, and press the like button, please subscribe to this channel, and I'll talk to you soon in a movie review. Talk to you then. Bye.